Yo, what's up, people? It's the Solar Kid, and I'm back on another podcast. Uh, it's the other side of the sun. I got my boy, Mav Radio, in the bed. What up, Keenan? Hello, Mav What up, other side of the sun is? How you doing, Mav Radio? I am really, really well right now, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be talking to my friend, my yeah. brother, my business partner, my engineer, my teacher. Oh, Very inspiring, man. Teacher. Yeah, man, you like when you're like, it's not good enough, Marv. It's just not, nah, bro, it's not good enough. Then I have to like go inside and cry for about three days. And then I'm like, but why wasn't it good enough? So you've made my ears more sensitive to what's good and what isn't. So shout out, man, like Solar Kid, get him for all the stuff you need, innit? Come a long way, though. We both have. Well, I mean, you, you've done a lot of stuff, but we all have, yeah. Shout out, Maslow, for the introduction. Shout- yes, my brother, Maslow. Yes. Mm. He was he like, said we were gonna, he's like, you two, when you connect with Keenan, he did say Steve as well, but like, he was like, when you connect with Keenan, that's going to be like a brother thing. And he was right. Like, that yeah. old wise kind of sage. Kind of characters. <laughs> you know. Similar skin tone. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to lock up my ass soon, bro, so then we can be brothers. Yeah, I missed the locks on you, man. It was a good look. Yeah, it's coming back. It's coming back, bro. Man, I rust off fire. You get me. Black class. The last year. Mm. Yo, so Mob Radio is a conscious lyricist, a vocalist, a producer, a human radio, a sound healer, motivator, speaker. And um, does that uh, kind of put in a nutshell all your many hats that you wear, sir? Yeah, I'll just chuck the word teacher in there as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a lot of hats, man. Uh, shame and shame and coming to that uh, equation, then. Yeah, so I would never call myself sh- a shaman or a shaman. Oh. I would call myself a shamanic pr- practitioner. Yeah, shamanic practitioner works for me because I train in shamanism. But I, I kind of see a shaman as someone who is out slightly further outside of society than I am. Oh. Um, so because I'm still in here and I'm still fallible in a lot of ways, I don't want to give myself that grand title and be like. Yes, I'm a shaman now. Yeah, but... That makes sense now to me, you know. Otherwise, I'll be like fucking judging you and shit and be like, yo, mom, radio, you think you're so good. You think you're shaming. Look all the shit you're doing, man. Hey, don't tell them on the podcast, though. They, they're not supposed to know about that. That's, that's hidden. No, but like true, true, true words is like in that whole scene, shamanism, healing, music, all the people with power, all the people who have responsibility, there's this whole shadow side to it. And like, if I don't give myself the title then I'm still a human doing my shadow work and helping other people to do their shadow work and hopefully doing some um, some sound frequencies that make people feel better in any form. You know, that's that's what I'm here for. I suppose there's a, there's a greater, like, responsibility that comes with taking the title because obviously those people do understand the duality of life in that sense, isn't it? Isn't it? Because we none of us are, like, you know, angels, that's for sure. But 100%. we start, like, but people who take, like, the color, or, like, priests or, you know what I mean, shamans or you know, monks or whatever, they all still have, I'm sure, I'm, well, I hope so. They Every still human. Have like, yeah. Has Every to. human has has both of the wolves and they have to feed whichever one they want to grow. Mm. Yeah, I remember saying in like in Christianity, it's like, it's not that you, when you like grow in understanding of spirituality, it's not that you become sinless, you sin less, you know, as you grow older and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's also like, if I was going to be a shaman, and even then I wouldn't call myself that, I would do that full time. And I wouldn't be living in London. I'd be somewhere in some natural forest, working with the plants every single day, allowing people to come visit me when they need healing. But I mean, I'd like to get there at some point, and preferably with money from great success through music and art. But um because I have to dedicate myself to my artistry because that's the way that I survive in this Babylon, I can't then go, I've got to apply the same business principles to something that goes deeper than business. And, and, you know, someone's got no money, but you can see, you can help them and guide them in their own self healing journey. It shouldn't matter if the money's there or not. So it's kind of something, yeah, something that I do with some of my time, but um, I put it into the music and the art as well. So, like, obviously, um, I mean, I know, I'm not sure if many of my viewers, you know, know, ever, like, you, obviously, you're a beatboxer, um, 
one of the sickest MCs I know. Proper freestyle of the dome, you know what I'm saying? Not these kids that fucking real scripts and shit. This motherfucker actually fucking spits bars. And um, yeah, all around artist and that. But I actually want to talk to you a bit more today about like, you know, the spiritual aspects because you're obviously a very spiritual brother. So super spiritual. Very spiritual, you know. <laughs> one with everything. Um, can you Which con- was the California? <laughs> can you like concisely tell us about your story and how you found them? Because I know, bro. Like, if you guys don't, he know, knows me. Man said concisely. Yeah, that, I have to say concisely because I have spent time. Let me working Google that. That's probably yeah. Like I've I've worked on Mantra. I've done his theater production. I've been doing his editing, mixing, and recording for like a long time now. So I know this guy's story inside out. I love you guys to get to know it, and obviously I'm gonna put links up, but. If you can, without giving... Okay, well, now you probably give a bit away anyway, but, like, concisely, just tell us a little bit about your journey and, like, how you came to the spirituality and then, obviously, maybe allude to, you know, the art that came from that afterwards. Yeah, sure. I'm actually going to make the biggest effort to make this concise and direct. <laughs> so, essentially, I w- I'm, like, a standard South London boy mixed race, grew up in West Norwood, mostly um, South London. And I was just never happy in life for a long, long time. I wasn't happy in life. Like, um, I think a lot of people can relate to that. But especially when I was going into schools or university or jobs, it just didn't, I didn't understand why there was someone else telling me how to live my life. And a lot of the time I correct teachers. I got kicked out of a grammar school. So I got accepted into a grammar school. This is a short version. But after I got kicked out, like the depression that I'd sort of had been building from school issues, dealing with institutional racism, um, parents not really getting on with each other, seeing that war zone. I had, a, I had depression building up. And when, I, when, I, when school wasn't the reason anymore, I went back home and I was out of school for nine months. And during that period, I decided to, you know, take my own life. I was going crazy. I, I was around myself with all this confusing stuff happening and yeah um so i've i'd say that until maybe my mid 20s i genuinely was a nihilist at best like couldn't stand the world for everybody it was stupid if they were smiling like why would you smile um obviously there's some things with trauma and things that i won't go into so deeply but as i've grown up hip hop was the one thing that kind of gave me a voice and allowed me to speak and it was tupac um Basically, as I decided to take my own life and, um, you know, viewer discretion and all that, if, if you're dealing with these things, maybe you, you might not want to hear this, but it might be useful. Um, I tried to hang myself using a belt on my, um, on my loft bed. And as that was happening, I was listening to like a shuffle mini disc type of thing. And if you don't know what a mini disc is, look that up. That, that, was, a, the, that was the technology of the future. Anyway, um, sidetrack, come back in. Um, I, yeah, I tried to hang myself, and Tupac Fugs Mansion was playing at the time. And the words literally at a moment where I was blacking out, colors were coming in, was like, I once contemplated suicide and would have tried, but when I held that nine, I could see was my mother's eyes. That's when I realized that hip-hop is deeper and that there's spirituality entwined within everything that we do, whether we agree with it or not, whether it's dark or light spirituality. And then from there performing at college, I had an out-of-body experience while beatboxing, like I was watching myself from above, I saw as like all the people which became just like fractal shapes and felt that I wasn't making the sounds come through, but I was witnessing that. And then I was just like, what is this? Probably around 21, I started like getting a little bit into meditation and looking at some things online. Um, There's also some exploration with, with drugs, with parties, with festivals and things like that. And eventually, through festival scenes and meeting people, I met someone in Bristol, Bristol, and I was able to, I was, I was reading and listening to Terence McKenna and other people who were talking about, you know, how plant medicines and consciousness have been shifted by psychedelics. And I was, at this time, I'd done some mushrooms, but suddenly I had the opportunity to actually discover what ayahuasca was about. Went to South America, studied with shamans in, in the jungle, um, I've worked with copious different plant teachers, as I like to call them. Um, free up the plant teachers, end prohibition, now, not, not later. And um, 
yeah, that's that's when I had the real experience of being shown what my voice, what a voice is, what our voice is, what my voice is, what the voice is. And from there, I can only express what is aligned with my mission through my voice. Um, unless I'm angry, in which case it slips, then I'd start chatting some shit. But um, all in all, it's been a journey of like making many mistakes, falling off a mountain, fracturing my spine, falling off a building. It was only 30 feet. I make it sound like I fell from the top of the mountain, but 30 feet off a mountain, fractured my spine, fell off a building, shattered my feet, uh, my right foot, fractured my wrist. Like made, made a lot of mistakes and both of them were to do with anger and conflict with people. Like the reason what they, they, they happened. So now I've just been trying to find peace or I've been finding peace or I'm in peace and... I find moments of being fully in peace in life and then I find other moments of tuning into the reality that everyone else is in, um, that we're all in and how much work there is for us as a species to live in a way that is beneficial to everything that we're connected to, not just a few people who benefit from making money or, or feeding from us um, as batteries. I mean, you could call them people. Some people would say they're not people. So. Yeah. So um, tell us a bit about like the work you're doing at the moment. Then, like, um, so obviously you started with that, and uh, I think you you did a sound healing on me once. That was really cool, and uh, I think that's that's part of your work right now as well. Yeah, I think we should do another one at some point, man. Even if it's an online one, while I'm while I'm traveling for a bit. But yeah, um, so the work I'm doing now is quite a lot of things, but the main focus is the Mantra Project, which started in 2017 with started in 2015 with the first song from it but 2017 I started thinking I want to make a theater show to talk about my life because of all the crazy things that have happened in my life and what the story is um and then I did that I did that by myself with no help um hey, what the time? Fringe. I'm getting there I'm getting there um in 2018 and then after that um, we developed the actual theater piece and um Keenan worked extensively with me on making a soundtrack for that um, we had an audio visual side of side of it. Where I was able to pay my friends that I love for work with me. Um, previously, I'd invested into the studio that um, that we used to have in Tottenham, and but this was a time where I could be like, right, you're getting paid, you know, um, and that changed everything. And now I've got a bit of funding through Sound and Music. Shout out Sound and Music all day. Um, New Voices campaign who've been able to give me a small budget where my friends who love me and know the mission have worked for probably minimum wage or less, uh, but actually been paid and been like, you know, I believe in your vision, and put it forward. So Mantra is a story of my life. Heal Me is the first single from it, um, which is out now. Link below. Or maybe it's here, or maybe it's here, or maybe it's here. Or maybe, it's, maybe it's just flying around. Maybe you just see the link go. But anyway, um, yeah, Heal Me was the first track. And it was quite, I've had a few people come back to me and go, yeah, Heal Me's nice, but... I prefer you when you rap, and I knew that was going to happen because it's too close. You know the journey, man. It's it's about freeing up the voice, really. Yeah. It's it's man can rapidly rap, rap the rap, rap, rappy any day, like. But in terms of singing and channeling certain vibrations, there's something about adding melody, melody that changes things. So I'm doing. I make that album's pretty much done right now. It's in the final mix of the mastering processes. Shout out, Abstract Sun. <laughs> Man, like, um, solo kid and stacks music. Solo kid, stacks music. Now he gets two, like, two little voice plugs there without having to pay me. Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> stacks music. Solar kid, you now listening to Abstract Sun. Other side of the sun. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I like tangents. They, it kind of explains why I do so many things. So at the same time as doing that, I'm currently making... Um, a program for to teach people in 14 days how to fully like work with their energy centers with sound and mudras and shakes with the hands etc um, which is called the 14 day chakravation challenge so I'm being like do you know what I see people doing their challenges why don't I actually challenge and tag people and nominate people to come and do a 14 day challenge with me um, and that's gonna that the plan of that is to give me a, a solid steady income because music is just keep investing and it grows a bit and keep investing and it grows a bit um kept me alive so there's that and also i'm i'm working with yeah as you said as you alluded to before working with people in terms of online and in-person healing sometimes in a guided meditation form sometimes i do hands-on energy movement uh, 
Mm. That's just a little energetic clearance there. Don't fear the burp. It's extremely, you know, it's better out than in, as they say. <laughs> so, yeah, at the moment, I'm just, I'm working to, towards a greater plan that I've been blessed to be given some responsibility and that involves, without giving away too much, people, sovereignty, land, love, food, sustainability, and a new way of living, a new way of loving, as my brother Mutso Lace would say. Jeez, they got Mutso Lace. Mm. It'll be in uh, another episode of the uh, other side of the sun at some point. Is that going to be the six-hour episode? Uh, no, 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 no. I actually did I play, it. I play. Muti, Muti, that's just a little jab at you, man. I know you're watching this now. Six hours. <laughs> uh, shout out my brother all day. That's that's my number one brother. We build together. We work together. We fight together, and we work that shit out together. It's good shit. Yeah, that's my brothers, man. All my friends. and you and me, bro. Moving on to that with a happy tangent. I'm yeah. grateful for this brother because at, when I first got in the studio with him, I thought the guy did not rate my music one bit. I thought he thought I was an absolute egomaniac dickhead without, uh, the, uh, without the grounding in his musicality. And I think, you know, only now 60% he believes that. So we're probably good. But um, <laughs> no, we, we basically had a way of discovering how to communicate as artists and engineer as the person who can really be meticulous and the person who's like i'm just i'm just communicating from my heart man you know just like my music just like my so it's like <laughs> don't judge my heart music but yeah <laughs> it's about how it feels not how it sounds and sometimes it just the music is about how it tastes and how it smells <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's a intelligent God. joke for you people there but yeah, um so we, we we were able to hash out a lot of differences um because I, I just literally thought I had a fragile ego as a musician, not as a rapper or a beatboxer, but as a singer and someone who was making music. I hadn't spent that much time in the studio as much as I'd wanted. So that was my that was my boot camp of how to deal with someone who loves you, but clearly sometimes I think, just get I think also at that time um I was still in my not smiling so much phase. I never see all that much. Even though I was smiling inside, I just I think I just have this look on my face, like because I remember like a few people I've worked with in studio. I mean, I'm like trying to get the best out of this person, but they just thinking like, nah, Keenan hates me. Like, why you hate me? I'm like, I don't fucking hate you, man. I just want you to fucking do it properly. That's all. Yeah. So what what I believe I might have taught you a little bit is how to get someone to do something properly with, properly without feeling like they're doing something wrong. And that's, some, that's a skill that both of us have trained in in this time because... I think you made, you, me, you made me aware of it. Like, and a lot of things made me aware that I, I need to be like... I mean, because I'm so blunt and straightforward as a person, sometimes it can just come across, especially when you're in a studio situation and people are like, I'm so tired, you know, about their music. That's why you should be the artist, bro. That's why, like, <laughs> yeah, do the, I need you as my engineer, but you should do your artistry because then you get to be that belligerent dickhead. And then you might become a millionaire by the end of that. By the end oh, of that that's year, that's why I like being a producer because a producer kind of encompasses all of that. It's basically it takes all my skills. You know what I mean? Like, it's the humility, though, as well that you've shown in times where, like, you know, obviously you can big bro me. Obviously, you're doing a lot of stuff, but you, there's a lot of humility that I think is missing sometimes in engineers and techs in certain things where they're like, just do that, just do that, and because of our relationship together as friends and brothers in terms of making the music and going over those rough phases or the points where my voice wasn't working as well, or wasn't in as good health or, you know, my confidence in my voice, we, we work through it together. And that's, that's why, you know, I've invested way, not nowhere near enough money into our relationship, but I, for me, it was all the money in the world. And that has, like it's kind of like it's been the the seed that's been watered and now we're seeing some of the blossoms come through yeah. we're still we're still in springtime though we haven't harvested yet yeah bro we're still in majorly springtime but also i think like with me because like i mean we're so similar in a lot of ways and even like our vocal tone like when we sing and stuff and that's why i used to be so hard on you because it used to remind me of how my lack of self-confidence used to come through when i sing and it, it wasn't like because I know what I want to hear, you know what I mean? And it's like, no, that's not it. You know what I mean? And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm feeling like, yo, bro, you need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this to get to that point. And then, like you said, it, it just took time and, you know, patience. And, yeah. I mean, our last few sessions in studio were, like, before lockdown, we were literally just banging the shit out. Like, literally, we were there, man. To be fair, though, like, 
if we if lockdown hadn't happened and we continued in the way that we've been going, we'd be a lot further along now. But the way that we've continued to work and work and work with distancing, with um, you know, not even being able to see each other like physically, that's been real, man. Like that's like so we we're still on track to have this album out not uh, for my birthday, October twenty second. Um, three videos would have been released by then. Um, we've got one released out now. Once a year, yeah. I'll say all the links will be um in the, the you know on the YouTube videos there. All the links, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Sweet man. But yeah, um, I'm really proud of the work we've been doing. Like, and, and it's kind of like this album for myself is, you know, you you got to make a contingency plan. For some people, it's legacy in terms of what what land they have, what property, what money they have. For me, if I finish this album and I pass at any point, I feel like I've put the like the DNA structure of my lessons in life into this album and um, whether it takes a hundred years, a thousand years, or whether it's next year, I believe that this music is undeniable. Um, it still can be improved and I'm sure we'll do remasters and retakes on it as well in the future, but this is the message unfiltered, me expressing my imperfections and my own ignorance and how being connected to something deeper has allowed me to realize that we are all one. We are all one and everything we're looking for is inside of us. You know, we're talking to ourselves. I'm talking to myself right now. You're myself. Keenan's myself there. Like the codes are in this album, like to the fullest. Even if you just read the what the names of the songs and you didn't listen to them, you'd kind of get a picture of a journey, you know, and it's all, it's making a film. And that's the next thing is like, so hopefully by the time this is up, I'll have a link here. If not, it will be a link to my website. But hopefully, I'm, I'm basically I'm trying to raise some money to make this into a proper film, so that I can it can be the whole album from start to finish, um, displayed in this virtual reality world that my brother Joey Baker, shout out Joey Baker, out Joey. has been. Um, yeah, he's been cultivating this incredible thing. And yeah, we did the uh, intro for this podcast as well, by the way. Big up, Joey. Hey, family things is that you see like the creative waves just pattern out in different spaces and seeing that's why I like what I've seen in the industry is people want to hold their contacts to their chest they want to hold their knowledge to their chest and that's happening less and less as we go on but there's so many people who do not want to share their resources I'm like look if I got an animator you need an animator like we are building something that in one form or the other will stand the test of time yeah. and that's that's what this ultimately is about it's not about your fortune, your bling, you know, how many women that you've got on your line. Although, you know, I don't do too bad with that. Um, it's, it's not about the ego pursuit. It's about what we put out. And when we meet our makers and when we go through that final meditation and we look back, we go, yeah, my heart is, my heart is light as a feather. I've lived a good life. And I'm grateful for those memories that you've just shown me and I'm ready to go on to what's next. Mm -hmm. Safe man, let me let's uh let me ask you some randoms. <laughs> Is this like a quick fire round where I answer quickly or not? Well maybe it doesn't have to be particularly quick fire. Let's just uh yeah, then... what is your mantra? I know I'm imperfect, but I know that I'm worth it. Straight <laughs> up. Like whenever I remember what my darkness, my shadows are because I've come to the point in my evolution of um, consciousness where I know that I'm capable of every act in humanity. Now that's the darkest, the lowest. The, I haven't manifested most of them, but I know that I'm capable of doing the worst and the best stuff in life. It's just my choices and the surroundings around me and my resources that dictate that. So by, by making a song and the first one that I'm releasing from this album that says, as a cure for my depression at the time, it was like, I know I'm imperfect, but I know that I'm worth it. It just reminds me, you know, it's not, it's not just step into the light, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not black Jesus with dreads, you know, it's, it's actually, we're all humans out here, but humans have been downgraded in this society. We aren't allowed to do what we're capable of, but that's partly because we're not confronting the shadow within and we allow it to be an outward projection where we're going, oh, the Illuminati does this and oh, the war does that. Obviously, we need to know that and I don't want to like, you know, no, ever... <laughs> yeah, so I'm not going to go into the conspiracy theories, but like in terms of 
I never wanted the value where life is taken, where, where we lost people and stuff. But really, in the grand scheme of things, it all comes back to looking at your own stuff, what's happened with your upbringing, with your surroundings, the trauma that you haven't faced, and you're worth it. You're worth, like, money is never worth a human life. You could get all the money in the world. It's underneath what one human, even the most poor, upset, or vile, or whatever you want to call it, person, their life is more valuable than all the money in existence. So, yeah, that's, that's one of my mantras. All right, so do um, you have a favorite, like, item of clothing that you wear when you're creating? <laughs> like some blue suede shoes or something? <laughs> I got a poncho, man. I, I got a poncho that's just like... I don't even know if it's in this room. If it's in this room, I'm going to have to just go check, see if I got it. But, yeah, I got a poncho that's... It's been... It came with me from Ecuador, and it's been in... Um, sacred ceremonies it's been in on like stage <laughs> yeah it's got that it's got that fire smoke like into it, it smells like palo santo too oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that's like my cloak of invincibility like if i ever and it's not invisibility it's invincible like you can see me clearly but like with that i've got this cocoon of energy that just holds me um that's powerful but i don't i don't necessarily take it to get into my clo- uh, my, my performances or my recordings um to be honest now recording is just i come here and i do this and then um if i send it on to my brother keenan as long as i've got a budget for it <laughs> or my brother stacks or there's some other people as well that that could potentially work with some stuff but ideally those are the two people that i go to and um my clothes i like wearing african print when i can that, that makes me feel quite powerful as well on stage. I like to perform in African print. So if you're watching this and you make custom fitted African gums, imagine what it looks like if I put it on me and go... <laughs> insert your company name here. <laughs> so um, Now we're missing from sponsors. <laughs> I would like some clothes. Thank you very much. I'd like some... Like, yeah, so I, I, I like I like to look like I've got some tight, like I'm wearing them today, like these, these are these tight. Um, well, that's, that's, that, that shirt, that shirt is, is not like a normal Marv Radio shirt, that's for sure. I've never seen you wearing such a nice shirt before. Not, not that you nice don't wear shirt. nice shirts. What do you mean not nice that, shirt? This is from Primark. Nice this is like... Charity shop with a Primark label. That just looks a bit like, yo, let's go down the pub, mate, and let's go have a, a few points, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, yeah, I kind of feel like, a laddie shirt. I say enough about me in such a way that whatever I'm wearing, it's, it's inconsequential, you know? Like, and to be honest, I, I encourage nudity in life. I encourage people to be around each other in non-sexual contexts and not wear all the, like, the clothes and the layers that we put on top of ourselves and be real, um, metaphorically and literally, you know? So, yeah, let's talk um, about that. We'll see maybe now. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> it's all right, man. You come to, I'll bring you to a hippie festival and you'll be like, Marv, 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 look at me, I'm naked. And I'm like, yo, nobody else is naked yet. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't think my well, wife is me. You'll know. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but that's, that's what, that, the reason I said that is because we're talking about clothes. And for me, I also have a desire to show that the human body is not sexual, not political, it is actually natural. And any context of energy between the human and another human or whatever platform that humans get involved in, that's where it becomes sexual, is the actual energy, right? Your physical body as you were born is your, it's not your birthday suit, it's your royal attire. That's you and your royalty right there. Mm. So, um, yeah, but some people don't want to get naked around each other, I understand. Speaking of that, what's your, what's your favorite food to eat after having sex? Favorite food to eat after having sex? You know what? I, I like to intermittent fast in the daytime. I often, but um, if do you know what? There's there's so a smoothie after sex is banging. Like a smoothie after sex is banging. Raw chocolate, like vegan chocolate treats mm. during. You know, you can like make make the melt and thing. Yeah, and that's mm. Make it um, melt. Um, but like as in my meal meal, like. My, my, my staple ingredient, and I'm sorry about the air miles, and I'm sorry about how in countries that I care about, indigenous people can't afford it anymore, but quinoa, man, I'm a quinoa addict. 
Mm. My planting, you know, a little little veg stew curry, spicy stew curry type thing. I've had one of Marv's meals before. It's uh, pretty nice. Oh, thank you. When he invites me over for dinner, which was once, I think. (laughs) Yeah, what about all the time in lockdown? I was like, come over. And you're like, it's lockdown. I'm like, come over. It's lockdown. Lockdown, motherfucker. Okay, so let's just listen to what they tell us to do all the time then. Yeah, well, you know what it is, man. You know what it is. I feel it. I feel it, bro. I feel it. Now, um, shout out, like, I just want to say shout out to everybody who's dealing with this crazy pandemic in whatever way you feel is right for you. Um, you don't have to agree with everyone else about what's happening out there, but as long as you're looking after yourself and your people in this time, and even if you're not, Failures are possible in really challenging times, but just well done for making it to this point and keep going, keep going. Like find your, find your way of being you. Like we don't all have to be out here like taking magic mushrooms um, or ayahuasca or, yeah. or any. Yeah, you, you, don't, you don't all need to be doing that, but like I would defend my right to do that with, you know, I'd rather defend it with life, but I would take it to the death because it's really important for me that you can interact with these things anyway tangential thinking is my superpower i go from one portal to another portal so where we go have, you got more questions you still have a do you have any kind of like hero or like uh, someone that you look up to or aspire to or... for me like i'll always have a special place for tupac because he saved my life in some ways and and even though he was doing the fuck thing what? he was always conscious socially so um, I mean, I yeah, and then the- Tupac as a kid, I just smoked bare weed. I just smoked. He made me. Tupac made me a a, a weed smoker. <laughs> Tupac and weed makes you think, though. Like when you. Oh, like- but he does. Yeah. No. No. I, I love Tupac, man. Yeah. Um, I think modern day, there's a few people who really do inspire me. Actually, um, like, and and to say these people inspire me, I wouldn't call them my heroes, but I'd say they're inspirations. Um, obviously, I have to talk about Bob Marley for half a second, and then there's James Brown. There's, there's like I could go on and on about who before these times um, are inspiring. Bobby McFerrin. If you don't know Bobby McFerrin, you have to look him up and see what his voice can do. Jace. No um, but in this day, yeah, like the Kendricks, the J. Coles, the Commons, the Talib Kweli's, the um, Earth Gang, Anderson Pack. Yeah, you sure like. Me. Yeah, dope, man. Um, UK wise, um, Rich. Yusuf Days. Ah, oh, Yusuf. Rich. Yeah, um, Rich for sure. Rich is, yeah, I'd, I'd call him a bit of a hero because of the way that he has moved as well as made music. Like, he seemed to always have the community at heart and dealt with some difficult stuff in order to hold that together. Oh, shout Rich. out, Rich. Yeah, shout out, Rich. <laughs> Yes, man. Like, hey, listen, if I, if I have to find a concept for me and Rich to do a track, that would be, that'd be dope. So, yeah, let's bring that in. Um, do you know what? Like, a lot of people talk a lot of bullshit about Stormzy or Wiley or any of these. Like, I'm like, I see you as a human and I see how you're in this ridiculous bubble where everything... Like, I'm going to shout out Wiley right now because like, I'm not shouting out everything that he says and how he says it. That's all I'm going to say in advance. I'm shouting him out. In the game, you know what I mean? That guy, the way they did him, they did him dirty. Like, just locking him off for saying that, what, Jews control the media. Now, I have no comment on such an issue. It's not my political game to speak about those kind of things. But there's some grounding in some aspect of racial inequality and specific religious or economic classes controlling what the industry is. So, mm. yeah. Anyway, yeah. another tangent from who is... No, you who don't I... have to go deep on that, man. I mean, we can even keep it just kind of, uh, you know, we don't have to be blatant about it, I guess. Like, you know, saying, but people know what we're talking about, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, anyone who tells you how the world works and they assume that they tell, what they tell you works the same way for everyone on this world is an idiot. Like we have multiple realities crossing over each other right now. We have many things that are true and many things that are half true and et cetera, et cetera, many things that are false. So in terms of not going deep on anything, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to tell you how the world's structured. I've got a bit of a clue on how the universe and energy is structured, but this social construct, I've got m- myriad of theories that could potentially be the 
the actual thing that's existing. All I know, though, is sound is a key to our consciousness. Speaking of which, man, before we finish, you want to give us a quick uh, freestyle thing? You want to give us a little bit of a... Hey, you know what? I did, I did, I did set up my little loop station here, didn't I? All right, let's because... do this. Yo, my name is Marv Radio. You're listening to and watching The Other Side of the Sun with Solar Kid, Abstract Sun all day. This is an untitled freestyle. So this chorus has been done before, but I quite like it for a freestyle. No one really knows what's going on, so we might as well just make it up. No one really knows what's going on, so we might as well just make it up. No one really knows what's going on, so we might as well just make it up. No one really knows what's going on, so we might as well just make it up. Up, 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 up. Up, make it up, make it up, make it up as we go along, as I flow along, yeah. I won't settle for any less than greatness. I will only deal with real, I'm not here for the fakeness. I see so many people that want to just snake this, but the snake brought the apple, so I'm kind of tainted. I'm trying to think of what I need to be and what I am inside me. I'm like infinity, infinity multiplied by infinity. But well, that's squared or maybe that's cubed, but I'm trying to be Rubik's. When I do this multiplication of changing directions and changing these colors, this one's for my sisters, this one's for my brothers. Every time you look inside, there's more to discover. And listen, people been saying they've been missing the rap. I'm just trying to come with a different track, something that gives people energy and melody. So maybe it's not what it's meant to be, but I refuse to wait to die before I rest in peace. Yeah, and I'm in the cook. I'm in the kitchen cooking with ingredients and I got a recipe. I'm gonna look at the words and see what I need to say. Cause no one really knows what's going on. So you might as well just make it up. No one really knows what's going on. So you might as well just make it up. No one no 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 going on. Just make it up. Going on. Yeah. Out. Uh. You see on my t-shirt, I'm high with the clouds And everything I do is pure fire right now, ah uh, I'm moving round, I'm a mover You see me like one of those Uber scooters, ah uh, And I move so quickly, so swiftly I'm the way it's meant to be I follow the tide as I ride in the ocean Floating, don't know where I'm going But I'm losing my motion Locking, but they thought I'm locking Popping, locking, it's a different kind of motion Yeah And I don't wear no watches But I've got something to show you Because the clock ain't stopping so if i move here and show you i'm saying that's now that's real that's what we are okay time is now time is precious time is golden time is the only thing we're holding i'm a bit sad that in the streets i'm facing people use it as a diss word when they say pagan but pagan is somebody who's connected to the nature the how can you hate the thing that just made you uh so i'm trying to move through the vortex i'm feeling more orgasmic than all the times i remember combining once when i had raw sex Oopsie. Yeah, it's true me. Every time I do, it's all for the truth. And I know that I'm living in London town. The streets where it's going down. Leave me with mosquito bites. Need some witch hazel right now. I'm a vegan, but there's still beef everywhere I look. 
Now maybe I'm plant-based, maybe I change when I cook. And I feel the power, but I'm grateful for the sweet and I'm grateful for the sour, the sour, the sour. I guess it's just a reflex. Give me what I need next. I need to not reflux. I need to not throw up because I'm trying to hold my shit down when I'm moving around town. And I'm trying to satisfy every urge I can see inside me that's heavenly and everything that's in between or everything that's down in the hell, down in the hell modes. I don't want to do that shit. Take a self mode. Take a moment if you drop and bring it back so sick that you don't even care that it dropped. And that's a fun day, Sunday. It's not even Sunday right now. We're talking about a Tuesday, but I guess it's a new day. I'm trying to move. I see how they're trying to move me, but I realize that I must be free. So I'm tearing this loop free. I'm cutting it like I got scissors or like I'm playing cricket. Home run, like it was baseball, but I ain't talking about wickets. I'm, I'm a jungler, so wicked, wicked. I be doing this sick shit that make you understand what talent is. Trying to find my balance quick. Every time I'm doing this outlandish shit. Ah, yes. This outlandish shit. Ah, yes. This outlandish shit. Hey, listen. Where was I? Oh yeah, I gotta go back to the place like home. I think they call it Africa. Place like home, man, it feel like place I need to be. A place where they be taking all of our resources for money they can spend, money they can lend, money they can buy. Money can just lend your heart and your soul when you don't feel the flow. So money is something that I don't really know. But if you ain't got much money, need to get some food for your children for a nice pan, go down to Iceland. And then you might go to Sainsbury's. But listen, I don't go to supermarkets. That shit's legendary. I try and get it from my local Turkish guy, even though the price is more high. But I'm trying to live my life in a way that it wouldn't be a Turkish guy. It could go back to the African line and I could buy from an African guy. I'd rather spend the money around with a black pound. But I'm not black now. I'm an Afro king when I put my pipe down. I am not somebody you could keep off his crone or his frown. I'm going to take a moment, go back with the words that I see on the screen. But sometimes you need a little chorus in between to remember what you're doing and remember that there's a theme. Cause time is a luxury that I will not spend But I'm living my life so clean Cause no one really knows what's What's going on No one really knows what's What's going on No one really knows what's going on, no really what's going really on. So we might as well just make it up No one really knows what's going on So we might as well just make it up No one really knows what's going on So we might as well just make it up Yeah a little cough, but it's not from Corona. It's because there's dust in my home, cuz. Walked into a warehouse, a warehouse. Now I'm having a nightmare how I'm keeping my throat dry when I'm trying to freestyle. I'm trying to live my life. Run out of water. Well, I guess that's just life. Gotta overcome and look at the words. I never repeat the same word twice. So I'm going down and I see there's somewhere I can see where man says ayahuasca. Hmm. I gotta give thanks, bruv, because it shook up my whole life when I drank it. And I saw all the sounds and I realized that this funk is something in me to share, something that needs to prepare people for a place that's not here, that's not there, that's somewhere in between. The unity, so we can see and we can breathe. I talk about the San Pedro, a cactus that I drunk in South Africa that, or South America that maybe that was to let go. But that's prophetic because I'm going to do it in South Africa next, kid. Yeah. So I'm seeing in the future and seeing in the past. I know that there's an end to everything and this might last. So maybe I should take more time to meditate or maybe I should just take more time to elevate. Maybe I should take more time and not hesitate and realize so once they say a legend's great, it's not about what people say about you. It's what you do in your life. It's how you really make your moves. And I'm not confused. I'm not Confucius. I live more like Lao Tzu. The Taoism is coming through. It's all about that love that you feel inside. It's all about letting go of your ego and pride. It's all about enjoying the ride. Like Bill Hicks said, it's just a ride, but it's more than that. It's a ride where if you die, you get another time or you go to a place where you're more aligned and you can shine with your light. I'm not one to tell you about a religion. I'm not on that religious hype, but the spiritual life has got me thinking that I could see out of my first eye and I see the colors every single day as they rotate, as I meditate. Like I said before, it's here to elevate. I'm the elevator. I think I've got a pause now. I'll see you later. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Like, I'm glad we did that because most of the time, if I've got an audience in front of me, there's no room for error, but there's some errors in there, and that's just real freestyle for you. So that's like 
Yeah, no, I watch them. Do you know what? I, I don't, I don't like go. Oh, I made a mistake and that shit now. But I do watch it and go, all right. So that's that's a moment where I wasn't fully connected with my presence. That's a moment where I wasn't fully in that. So, um, but shout out all the real freestylers. And if you're someone who's an MC right now and you don't freestyle, just practice, man. Just get some beats and go. I don't know what I'm saying. And then you get over the fear of not saying the right thing, and you might just even be like, I got some words to say. I don't know what to say. Give me some words to say. And just like move slowly, move gently. But freestyle is for me one of the highest levels of transcendental meditation that you can do. It's improvisation. It's something that allows you to be in a flow state. So yeah, big up. Big up, Mob Radio. Thank you so much for coming on today, my brother. It's been real as always, always is. Uh, links and stuff will be in the description. People, don't forget to like, subscribe, share this thing. It's the Other Side of the Sun podcast. I'm going to be talking about loads of different things. Music, life, science, philosophy, nature, everything that is and everything that I'm into. Big up, my brother, Mob Radio. Any last thoughts? Any last things you want to say or add or tell people? I, I, want, I want to shout out Solar Reagan. Solar Rogan. <laughs> I want to shout out... <laughs> I want to shout out Solar Rogan. For having me on the show. Yeah, edit that. Don't make me look like an idiot. Yeah, edit that. But <laughs> don't make me look dumb. But um, yeah, so shout out Solar Rogan. Like, it's been nice to be on the podcast because it's allowed me to get to some level of something that, to be honest, I do these interviews and then there's this whole like seven hour thing that hasn't quite made it through. So I just want to say like, do tune into me. Like, do, if, like if, you, if, you, if you're watching this and you're like, you're like that guy's fake please, please get in touch with me. Please check my shit out and actually listen to it and see. Innit? And if you, if you really are here for this movement of like elevation of people, support me genuinely. Like there's, there's a crowdfunder that you're going to see on this video. Go to my website. Um, I'm trying to make this album into a film. I'm trying to make a graphic novel. And then from that, I want to build the whole platform of what I've done and work with young people so they can do their own mantra and find their own way to alleviate themselves from their experience. And not just young people, any artist. So um, yeah, hit me up at info at marvradio.com if you would like to collaborate, make some beats, some bars, if you would like a healing in person, online. Um, and yeah, if you need someone to ask about psychedelics with in a trustworthy, confidential way, um, I'll, I'll be up for some conversations about that because I think they do get a very bad rap even today when they're getting reconsidered. It's uh, strange to me that something that actually helped me, and none of them fix you, by the way, but something that helped me to get out of depression is illegal, and we have depression leading to suicide. So I want to see a reform on the whole way we live life, and hopefully you can be along for this journey and see just where we can take it with your help and supporting also abstract sun solar kid other side of the sun all the family shout out my brother mozzolais who got the mention earlier like everybody's building Faisal salah joey baker like it's yeah. time man it's, it's time for us to do some some very special things so um and we're not gonna have to like we're not gonna have to rebel in terms of fighting against anything we just build our own thing man that's all it ever is lessons don't forget to like subscribe again the other side of the sun podcast we are out Peace. The other side of the sun. 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 The other side of the sun, bruh. The other side of the sun. The other side of the sun. The other side of the sun. The other side of the sun.